the election season kicking into high gear. We've made some changes in the WYPR lineup. You'll be hearing more from Karen Hustler as she will be reporting on the region's most hotly contested races for, for WYPR's news department. And while originally limiting myself to four days of midday when I was given the opportunity to host this show two and a half years ago, I will now serve as host of Midday Fridays as well. We thank Karen Hostler for her able hosting of this show during the past year and look forward to her reports from the field and contributions to WYPR's uh, Inside Maryland Politics with C. Fraser Smith. Speaking of C. Fraser Smith, he's one of our guests today on our panel here to talk some politics with the uh, Tuesday primary just a few days away. Fraser Smith is senior news analyst at WYPR and daily record columnist. Fraser, nice to see you. Welcome to the show again. Nice to be with you again, Dan. And sitting next to uh, Fraser is his colleague here from WYPR, uh, managing news editor of the station, SUNY Kali. SUNY, you please say hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you. Sitting next to SUNY is uh, Donnie Glover, founder and publisher of bnews.com. Donnie, nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, sir. And joining us from Towson today, uh, Brian Sears, who's political editor of the Towson Times and the Patuxent Papers and has some interesting stories to tell us about the county races. Brian, nice to see you. Thanks for having me, Dan. Joining us by phone, a Doc Cheatham of the NAACP in Baltimore. He'll be joining us in just a few minutes because we have at the top of the, the things to discuss uh, the latest on the Pat Jessamy, Greg Bernstein primary race uh, for Baltimore City uh, State's Attorney. Uh, Mrs. Jessamy uh, is quoted in The Sun today uh, saying that her primary opponent, Mr. Greg Bernstein, would, quote, set us back 60 years if elected, a claim that her critics contend is stoking fears about whether uh, Bernstein's anti-crime policies are going to target uh, black residents and take us back at least to the era of zero tolerance policing in Baltimore. So if you want to chime in on that, here's the phone number for midday, 410 662 8780, our toll free number 866 661 9309. If you're in Whitehall and want to talk about the county executive race, you probably have to use the toll free number. And the midday email address is midday at wypr.org. You can and send us a comment. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the county executive's race, too. Uh, the primary between Kevin Kamenitz and Joe Bartenfelder, that's looming. A word about early voting before we go on here. I've got this from Donna Duncan at the State Elections Board. Here's the wrap-up on early voting in Maryland. Uh, early voting for the primary ended uh, yesterday, September 9th at 8 p.m. There were a total of 77,086 voters who took advantage of this opportunity. Baltimore County had the second highest number of early voters in the state with 12,879, and Baltimore City had 7,264. In general, early voting went very smoothly, she says, during this first run in Maryland. And we hope that more voters will take advantage of the opportunity during the general election when they'll be early voting for that. So, gentlemen, let's get started. I think the, the top story here is what Pat Jessamy has to say uh, at, the, at the front here. Is this uh, playing the race card? Fraser Smith, I'll start with you. Well, uh, I'm not in Mrs. Jessamy's head, so I don't know exactly what she had in mind. But um, race is always a factor in these elections, and it will be in this one, I'm, I'm sure. On the other hand, I don't think anybody should write off the judgment of the voters across the board in the city, and I think people are going to look at what they think the issues are, history being one of them. Uh, I, I think people uh, are going to be concerned about their public safety, and some people will vote that. Some people will vote out of what has been called race loyalty. But mm -hmm. uh, So, you know, this, this may just remind people of uh, some things that they've been concerned about. Uh, SUNY Collier, what do you think Mrs. Jessamy is trying to say with that statement? Uh, I think the, the subliminal message is, help, I'm in trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. There's real desperation. Uh, I went to a, a meet and greet with some of her uh, supporters last week, and all of them basically talked about what a poor campaign she had run. And I'm wondering if how she's run the campaign, which is has been a slipshod operation, she has no polling, she had to borrow $100,000 of her own money, if this is indicative of how she's run her office, the state's attorney's office, and you know she's had this last-minute plug trying to get you know Elijah Cummings, who's probably one of the most suspected political figures. I think she is saying that there's a 400-pound gorilla in the room, and he's my friend. I think that's what's come up. Now the other thing is when when we talked with uh, uh, Greg Bernstein came in, he says they're getting a lot of support. Mrs. Jessamy does not have any polling out there. I think 
anecdotally, she has to be worried. And I think she's pulling out all stops. Right?